Where's Susanna? You want to share your story with us? How you got here? Oh, puppies for sale? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was, uh, my name is Susanna Crowder. I'm from Central Ohio, and I'm an author and a child advocate. Um, I was uh, raised by, well, I actually wasn't ever raised. <laughs> um, people who didn't want me became my parents. And I was terribly abused and to the point of being tortured. And I was also kidnapped and tortured as a child. And by the time I was 28, my, the depression had gotten the best of me. I didn't know that I needed mental health treatment. I didn't know that I had post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, I had become homeless. <clears throat> and I was seven and a half months pregnant and not married. And climbing into the McDonald's dumpster to feed the baby inside of me which is hard to do when you're carrying a boy. And uh, by the way, that child just scored his first soccer goal the other day. So. <laughs> Go, Matthew. But um, anyway, I, I was, uh, was very, just needed some help and um, decided I was going to find a family for my son to go to. And then I had already uh, climbed the fence and decided where on the railroad tracks I was going to kill myself. I was going to go on the railroad tracks there in downtown Columbus, where I had grown up. It was almost symbolic. I was going to do it there. That's where I had been abused, and I was still really mad about it. So the next morning, I woke up in my squat. I, I, my squat was in the back door of St. Joe's Cathedral in downtown Columbus. And I decided I was going to sneak into McDonald's instead of going into the trash can. I was going to sneak in and hope I didn't get thrown out because I wanted to go in the bathroom and get cleaned up and go to the library. I had seen this library my whole life. I was 28 years old. And I thought, if, the, if there's an answer, God, it's in there. And if you don't show me the answer, damn it, I'm going to do it. So I snuck in to McDonald's. I got cleaned up so that because I was known as the crazy homeless pregnant lady on the street. And I went into the library, went up to the second floor where I knew they had nonfiction. The librarian was putting together a table of inspirational books. And I said, OK, yeah, all right. You know, God is with me today. So I grabbed the first one I could get before the librarians realized that I was the crazy pregnant homeless lady. And I went and sat down, and it was chicken soup for the soul. It was the first one. And how many of us have ever opened up a book, and it's like, OK, God turned that page for me. <laughs> Yes, and I opened it up, and it was a story called Puppies for Sale. And I was such damaged goods when I walked into that library. My parents hadn't loved me. My mother was a drunk. Nobody cared. They were getting a divorce when they got pregnant with me, so they still hate me because they had to spend another year and a half together because of me. So I... I sat down and I looked at this story and I read this story and it was about a little boy who went into a pet shop and the man was selling puppies. It was a sign in the window that said puppies for sale. And he went in and he, he picked out the one he wanted. He had his life savings, $2.30 with him. And he said, I want that one. And the shopkeeper said, that's the runt. That, that one has a bad leg. You don't want that one. You want one of these other ones. And the little boy said, no, I want that one. And the shopkeeper said, you don't understand. That one's worthless. You want one of the other puppies. And the little boy reached down, and he rolled up his pants leg to show a mangled leg with a brace around it. And he said, I want that one. And I'm going to pay full price, because the shopkeeper had offered, look, take it for free. No, I'm going to pay full price, because he's worth it. And I'm going to pay you, and I'm going to make payments until I've paid for this dog. And that's what he did. He said, this dog needs someone who understands. And at that point, I was transformed. There, you know, we talked about yesterday the white light. Angels were flying around me, saying, Susanna, you are no longer damaged goods. You are worthwhile. Now, I was the crazy pregnant homeless lady in downtown Columbus. Those CEOs used to give me a quarter and look the other way, now call me in to speak to their employees. I was the crazy pregnant homeless lady 
And Fitness Magazine, when they needed to talk to an expert about emotional fitness, called me last year and quoted me in their magazine. Don't limit yourself to anything, you guys. You know, I, when I so needed, we see miracles happen every day in our lives. I didn't have a parent, ever. And Jack parented me that day because he had shared that story in Chicken Soup. And I'm sure probably every one of us in this room has been parented somehow by a Chicken Soup story or one of the wonderful people who have put stories in the books. And um, yesterday, I wanted to acknowledge and appreciate the Chicken Soup staff, if any of you are here, because I'm the crazy lady <laughs> who would call. And I called the Chicken Soup office after reading that story. I went out and I begged, and I got $2.80 because I found out how much it was going to cost to call the office because I wanted to make sure they were real. And I don't even know if I called your office or Mark's office or who it was. I just wanted to make sure that the book was real, that the story was real, that these people existed. And then I met you earlier this year when my book was released, and nobody ever told you you're a celebrity. You don't realize that. <laughs> Number one nonfiction author on the planet, and nobody's ever told him this. I'm sorry if I let the cat out of the bag on that one, because <laughs> you're so down to earth. And here I am with everything that has happened to me, and I still get to go in and talk to homeless people and sit down. My children save their money to go get double, the dollar double cheeseburgers at McDonald's and sit down. My seven-year-old son, Matt, sits down with the old homeless man on the street, eats double cheeseburgers with him, and says, still homeless, huh? Yeah, I was too. It sucks, doesn't it? You know? <laughs> Don't limit yourself to anything. And I know that I have to eat my words today on this because I still limit myself sometimes. Don't you dare limit yourself. And if you have something to share with the world, please remember that there's people out there who have already found a place on the railroad track to put their bodies. Don't hold anything back. If you have something to share, if you have a book to write, if you have a class to teach, don't ever think that you can't do it, and don't hold it inside of you. You don't have the right to. I'm sorry for speaking so long. Oh, it's OK. If I get that TV show on Fox, I know who's going to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny.